Hey, you're watching Fat Man, you dingus. Whatever he said. Ooh, it's your boy, Fat Man. Okay, welcome back to the channel. All right, Abba and Preach are talking about a lot of the drama that's happening with this whole Cat Williams shit. If some of y'all don't know, Cat Williams just spilled the tea. So let's get into it. If you're watching, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment, notify for me. You remember to never give up, never surrender, and keep on grinding. Here we go. Let's get it. We're only hearing about it because it's Cat. You know how many times these motherfuckers stole from nobodies? I don't care if he airs on everybody. I don't care how messy it gets. I don't give a fuck about none of that stuff. These people are thieves, and a lot of people are more protect uh, think it's more important to protect the image of black people rather than rooting out evil people within the community. Yep, true. Okay? Oh. People who steal Whoa! and pilfer. They right. want to make sure we look good. Meanwhile, there's dirty shit happening in the back. During Cat Williams interview. So essentially, Cat Williams was on Shannon Sharp's podcast, which is called uh, the Club Shay Shay. And uh, during the interview, he essentially it's aired a out a name. bunch of people in the industry. Everyone from the Kings of Comedy, Cedric the Entertainer, Kevin Steve Harvey, Hart, Kevin Smiley. Hart, for all kinds of different reasons. Uh, some for stealing Because he's jokes, salty, because he's mad. Others for claiming accolades that they never had. And the interview went viral. So It went had big. To say a lot. The one thing about that Cat Williams shit that it blew the fuck up. And it's the it's not just going viral. It's big because it's Cat Williams, right? Like, you got to think about it. To be a comedian, to be somebody like Cat Williams, to be fucking mad, to be pissed off, to be just in your feelings about some shit, you got to really think about it. You got to step down from your comedian pedestal and really be that nigga. Crazy. A lot of the people who were named had some responses. On the whole stealing jokes allegation, a lot of people were really shocked to hear that Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer stole jokes. Uh, I can tell you, they absolutely did. You can watch the videos themselves. Um, yeah, I mean, they stole those jokes. Yeah. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Halloween was a trip. Halloween, we couldn't afford no Halloween costumes. Hey, kids, please. Mama sent us down to the liquor store and put boxes on us. <laughs> we didn't know what we were. I don't know what we are. <laughs> I don't know. She didn't tell her. <laughs> I think we UPS, I guess. I don't know. You've heard me say that every Halloween I had the same outfit on. Every year. I just had a brown box. Aww. I wasn't nothing sad. I just not asked my father could I have a new outfit. And he said, no, just wear the same one. And it was just a brown box. And he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. Cedric doesn't write. Woo. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Gas is entirely too hot. That's all I'm saying. You are not supposed to be at the gas station making life decisions. <laughs> you just at the pump. Just Negro, did I eat today? <laughs> I can't get no half a tank. I got six cigarettes. I can't even do it. <laughs> used to be, if you had 10, 15, you could go to the gas station with confidence because you knew you was either going to be full or damn near full. If you had a 20, you ain't even talk to the person at the counter. You just 20 on 11, bitch. <laughs> Used to be, if you put $15 in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard and look through your CD and run in the store and get some Pringles and a snapper and it'll still be pumping. Now if you put $15 in, you can't even turn around good for that son of a bitch click. As soon as you put it in, just click, click. Gas $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone, hey, what's happening? Be walking around, cleaning the windshield. Speaking to gay, hey, girl, what's that? What you doing? <laughs> hey, 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 you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Dog, gay, hey, you go in there, bring me a wine cooler. Bring me a cooler, dog. <laughs> Not no more. He changed it. Hey, I ain't nothing going on at that pump except you and that pump. I. Your ass is looking at that. At least, pump. at least, at, at least he, he, he changed it up. What I know about comedians is that if you have material, a comedian will steal that material. That joke hit, oh, let me try it that. And Steve couldn't even say nozzle. Like, bro couldn't even do it. 
And you already think about it. These were supposed to be the kings of comedy. And the kings of comedy are stealing jokes? I wonder how they really became the kings of comedy. You know what I'm saying? Like, D.L. Hughley ain't saying shit about nothing. Because he probably knows, like, oh, nah, these niggas stole some of my shit. But I let them slide. And he didn't press on them. So I'm like, mm, interesting. <laughs> it's just not doing that well. You know when some like, it's funny for Steve, because he's changing the material, but, mm. He changed it. You never had your car radio up so loud that you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off. It looked like this. You flossing in a six shit converter. Car radio on. This is some proof. I gotta give it Cat Williams, right? Cat Williams is a funny motherfucker. He stands the test of time as a funny motherfucker. Now, what's crazy is the fact Cat Williams will tell a joke and it will be the truth because you know that fucking joke. Like, this, this shit, I used to have uncles, moms, dads, uh, family members, just even people in the hood just blasting their music to a motherfucking crazy and, and and not just blasting it bronx blasting it like hey can you turn it to a bronx level like th this shit was a blasting and if you didn't hear that shit turn off you'd be like fuck out my music that should be crazy bro but he's telling the truth What are you doing? They gonna move to the moon. What? Ain't gonna happen. Y'all move to the moon, damn it, we coming to the moon. Oh, we'll be right behind y'all in space shuttles with Cadillac grills. Cadillac grills. Rolling one headlight out. Tags be all wrong. It's not. He. All right. He he changed it though. The joke. He he made a joke. Cadillac rims. Fine. I think. I right, He changed it. There's nothing much there. It's not the same joke. It's not a one to one. Just kind of how niggas want. You know anime live actions but hey but still it's still considered considered stealing like nigga think about that y'all know we'll drive a space shuttle too that's right up our damn alley a space shuttle is long they ain't scared of no black folk we'll drive a space shuttle we grew up driving long for cars we'll drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter oh we, we get us a cigarette we get us, we be in a space shuttle like it's a 72 dude. We get us. Oh, yeah, he stole it, all right. Damn, damn, I was about to defend you, Cedric, until you took that whole joke. Yeah, he stole those jokes. We yeah. both stole those jokes. Some people are like, how do you know? Um, listen, joke mm -hmm. stealing is mm -hmm. interesting because some people don't feel like it's a big deal. And yet, if one artist stole a song from another artist, you would think it's always right for the artist to pursue them in court. Mm -hmm. But I can't call somebody out for stealing my work. If you don't know the process of making a joke, especially when it's your, and, and it's still any joke. According to Cat's own words, this is one of his best jokes, one of the jokes he closed with. And mm -hmm. you close on your best joke because you want people to leave the show on the highest note. That's what they stole. Making that joke is a lengthy process that can sometimes take years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you take an idea, you go out, you perform it, it bombs, it doesn't work well, it's clunky as fuck, but you gotta live through those awkward moments with those audience until you get to the point where it's its finalized product. So you go through all the ups and downs. You have other comedians watching you 
improved. Like I know and memorize the acts of most of the comics I know because I see them so often and I see the progress. So you get happy watching them improve and you get to talk with them backstage and sometimes they offer you little tidbits. They're like, yo, you missed that. Well, last time you performed it differently. So you go through that whole ups and downs and then you get to the point where it's ready for you to tour and do that stuff and now you're proud because it's killing in front of crowds and they're loving it, right? In that one hour that you spent with the crowd, that one five minutes that everyone's losing it on, right? You spent years crafting and then someone comes along, sees your shit, and then think they just because they they, they, they they tittle with it a little bit or change the premise enough that they can get away with stealing it. Of course, it's going to burn you up because you strive for that. And now they take in the credit like it's their own tribulations when it's not. That'll irk anybody. That's why. Yeah. Hard- OK. Yeah. You got a point. You got a point because I ain't going to lie. Right. It's like when people talk about cloud chasing. Right. Cat Williams, two jokes. Yeah, these are my en- I love how Abba said these are his ending jokes. The jokes that I'm supposed to end on, end the show with, and the crowd goes home laughing, giggling. Good night, everybody. That's it. But you telling me right now that the jokes that he took the time to master, create, and fucking kill were stolen? Just because a nigga was like, let me switch it up a little bit. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me, you know, change it, add a little, take out those, add a little something, something. And it don't hit the same. You can tell by the crowd it don't hit the same because they know they're not. That's not their words. They know that's not their truth. Like a lot of people say, "Oh, yo, you should do you should do comedy." I'm like, me, nigga, what comedy should I be doing, right? And I thought about it for a long time. I'll probably do it one day, right? Because a lot of friends and family, other people say, "Oh, he's funny," and I am funny, but it's only because it's relatable shit, right? You should come on, relatable shit's funny. But when it comes down to shit like this, I can't be a materialistic type of nigga. Like, yeah, a lot of comedians have material because that material is fucking bomb. You're supposed to go in, set up, tell a joke, kill it. Get the fuck out of there. But sometimes your material just, it bombs. Especially when you need to keep on producing it, creating it, flipping it, reversing it. All that shit, reverse it, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. So I get what Abba's saying because these comedians stole his best jokes and you can tell they weren't hitting. Artist who seems their melodies being stolen has recourse in courts, courts, and that's why people who have jokes stolen want that same kind of recourse. Now, does this mean that Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey aren't great entertainers? No, that's not what that means. Some okay. people are great performers. Yeah, they're just good at performing other people's bits. Ah. All right, and they're not the first, they're not the last. And also, keep it a stack with you, people from that era stole a lot of jokes. Them old yeah. niggas was constantly seeing jokes. And you know what the worst part is? We're only hearing about it because it's cat. You know how many times these motherfuckers stole from nobodies? Mm-hmm. You know, because some people just come up with one or two bits that are really great and the rest of the act is trash. But it's still theirs, right? Just because you're a one-hit wonder does not mean anyone has the rights to your song. And True. anybody who steals jokes like this, I promise you, they steal from a lot more people. It doesn't just happen once. To be which able is, bold enough to Which steal- is something that Dave Chappelle was like, yo, like, you you stole my bit. Like, that's my joke. And, it, you know, he got paid for the joke, but at some point, what happens when... As a kid, you don't understand how the fucking game works. And you don't understand how shit can really come from underneath you. Like you really got to put your mind and fucking body to it. Steal from a famous person like Cat, Because that shit was being performed on television when they stole from him. They stole from a lot more people. And you can find it. There's all kinds of posts on forums. People doing side-by-sides of Steve Harvey with other people he might have stolen from. And those bits sound crazy similar. That I can answer that question is by telling the bombinicious story. And this is D.L. Hughley. It's over. It's a true story. See, is that? This white family I don't think so. My bad. Might have made a man wrong. who worked for them occasionally named Bombinicious. And he did various small jobs for them on and off for about a week. One night he had just finished bartending the party and the lady of the house realized that she didn't have any money. So she said to him, Bombinicious, I-, I want to write you a check, but I, I don't know how to spell Bombinicious. <laughs> and he said, well, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. See, when I came to work for you, I told you my name. And then I said, but you can call me. By my initials. Everybody around here call me Bombinicious, fine, you call me that. Don't even worry about it. Everybody call me Bombinicious. 
I'm like, all right. So all week long, my ass talking about, Bama Nation, what up, boy? Hey, Bama Nation, run to the store, grab some beer, come on back. My cousin said, what you calling him? <laughs> Bama He said, everybody call him Bama It's all right for me to call him that. Like, nah, man, it ain't CJ. He's saying you could call me by my initials. That's what he's saying. Now, here's the thing. Not, mm. It's not because two jokes sound similar that's inherently still. Everything is contextual. <sighs> okay. Well, are you guys running in the same circles? Okay. How similar is a bit? Okay. Is it just topical? Meaning, when the Juicy Smollett stuff happened, a lot of people ended up writing the same jokes. People who never met each other on different continents, how did that happen? Because enough people are looking at the same problem, enough people are going to come up with the same ideas when it comes to the solutions and things like that. Same thing for jokes. When a lot of people are covering the same topic, but then you have to look at, okay, well, how similar are they? And if you look at a cat's bit, it's a very physical bit. He's doing motions. He's doing physical stuff. When you're replicating a lot of the same physical gestures, then I'm starting to look at you like, okay. When you're using yeah, a lot of the exact same yeah. words, then I'm looking at you like, okay, you've seen that bit before. I think we... And, and it's very, it's very telling when you can tell that they stole, right? And this is, this is, this is not just Cat's only problem, because it's not like Cat Williams isn't still funny. He's not, he's still that nigga. He can still have a comedy shit. He can still all that. He goes into a lot of people in the comedy world and they're like, well, where you've been? Where's your specials? Where's this? Where's your comedy gigs? Like, I get it. He goes hard because he's like, I've fucking paved away for myself just as the pimp nigga regardless he's used the whole pimp stereotype for years but it, it makes sense like if i paved my way for this long you gonna come and steal my joke now you bug it ups i guess i don't know and he just told me to tell everybody i was a ups man as a matter of fact it kind of <laughs> happened to you but it was not stealing i remember that you did a joke about we made a video about abortion, and we made a we we made a, a video about abortion. We had like thirty thousand subscribers on this channel. We made a video about abortion and how you were you you asked the question. You're like, I just want to ask a question, and you said, if it's her body, her choice, shouldn't it be my money, my money? We filmed that. We cackle about it. We post that video. The video goes out. A couple of weeks after that, Dave Chappelle special come out, and he, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he someone, had this same. Someone DM'd me, but someone DM'd me. He's like, "Yo, Dave saw your joke." I'm like, "No, Are you it's dumb? it's, it's impossible." And and I'm gonna tell you that because of the time to create a special, the jokes that you have on a spe on that special. The time frame different. that it takes for you mm -hmm. to build that joke, for it to be ready for The timing is completely different from the video. By the time they upload that video and it, it went on YouTube, Dave Chappelle's not sitting on his phone going through YouTube, Abba and preach abortion, and then he used the same joke. For that special, two months after you release that video, it's crazy. It's yeah. a, it's a, it, it, that not, did, that did not happen. That did, not, that did not happen. <laughs> but the similarity is possible. And True. that was for one line. Motherfucker, the whole bit? No, nah, he, he stole that shit. He stole that shit from Mike Curry. That, that's 100% theft. And, and like, I know the difference. Like, when I'm in M Montreal and some other random comic in Los Angeles is doing a similar bit, I've never published myself online, and mm -hmm. we have the same bit, I'm not going to think he stole it. Mm -hmm. Right? But... When you're a famous person like Ken, you run the exact same circles as these dudes. They see each other mm -hmm. in clubs. They watch each other on television. They stealing each other's shit. Yes, you can't get away with that kind of stuff. That's crazy. It happens. And if, here's the thing. It happens. Forget television. Before Steve even puts that shit up online, he has to be performing that shit in clubs. Somebody would have told him, yo, that's Cat's bit. There's no way you get away with that. Running that Somebody said it, and Steve Harvey was like, I don't give a fuck. Because Steve Harvey, country bunking ass, you know he said something in that area if he didn't give a fuck. And through a bunch of comedy clubs without him finding out. There's just no way. So, do I think these people? Absolutely. And also, here's another thing. Once you get to that kind of level of fame, all right, these cats, they don't write their own jokes. No they more. don't even really do stand-up like that. No. People no think more. because they were great in their young years, now they're doing all these movies, they're still great. No, they got writers. They got people who handle this stuff for them. That's how 
Kevin Hart got nabbed one time is because he asked people who write for him. The problem is, where are these guys getting their jokes from? Well, they go to the club sometimes and they just pilfer it from people. Yep. That's that's facts. That's facts. And why a lot of these big names don't like talking about it is because they don't want to cause conflict because it affects TV deals. It affects brand deals. It's negative publicity. But a lot of this stuff happens all the time. Internet, internet business has got a lot of weird and shady people with weird practices. Mm -hmm. And because of personal relationships, a lot of people don't like saying nothing. So even big Course. comedians... Who because it ruins... I, this is why I understand Kevin Hart is because he's made connections. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. If you make motherfucking connections and you're on the East Coast doing your thing, then you're at, the, oh, he was on the West Coast, whatever. He was on the East Coast doing his thing and now he's in Hollywood making all these jokes for niggas. What does that mean? It means exactly what the fuck it means. It means this nigga is making his content the way anybody should. He's got writers now. Who can write his shit for him? He's got people telling him what to say. He's a brand now. It ain't just, and that's why he can cheat and fuck around and not get blown the fuck up. That's why Kevin Hart is no longer just Kevin Hart. He's a whole brand business selling shorts and shit right now. He ain't doing comedy no more. He ain't making jokes no more. He don't got the special in him. Dave Chappelle still has it. Dave Chappelle can still make jokes. Yeah, it's about gays, trans, cripples, whatever the fuck, the government, all that shit. It is what it is because Dave Chappelle's that nigga. He's that nigga. But you don't see Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle was in like one movie and that's it. Come the fuck on, my guy. You telling me? Come on. Who know this to be true will not say stuff because they don't want to anger Kevin Hart or align them. Get blackballed in the industry, fuck up their money, fuck up their prospects. Come on. Deals with Ked or whatever it is, but these things happen all the time. As all a, the time. As a matter of fact, that's why when I went to Bobby Lee's podcast and I went and I told him, so why didn't we want to say nothing about Carlos Mencia stealing your joke? And he's like, well, I said something when he came to my podcast. He's like, okay, but I'm not talking about it. When they did that little video and Joe Rogan was doing that video and everything and stuff, you didn't, you didn't, they don't want to talk. They don't really want to do all of that. It's not everybody that really wants to have confrontation. I believe because they don't, he's about to say, I believe because they don't want to be confrontational. Nobody wants to be confrontational in this game. It's like, oh, it's a joke. It's like, all right, cool. But I ain't going to lie to you. When I see some of these comics and I see the shit that they've done, it's, it's, there's a difference between telling a joke and me having to eat. And Dave Chappelle said it. You never fuck with another man's food. That joke could have put a lot of food on my table. And the fact that a lot of these comics don't have the balls, the heart, the intensity to be on somebody's ass, come on, that's crazy. Now, Carlos Mencia, at first he had his whole TV show. He was crack, cracking up jokes, making up funny shit. Obviously, somebody was writing for him. But it was still funny. I still died laughing, and I respected that man for cracking me up every night. I didn't know they were stolen jokes, but he has a history of stealing jokes. And it's bad when Joe Rogan was like, well, I should beat the shit out of you. And I'm like, ah, Joe, you're taking it too far. Fuck him. Fuck that nigga. Do your thing. But Carlos stole a lot. Of, Carlos Mencia, Mina Mencia, stole a lot of jokes. Stole a lot of jokes. And usually he kept going head to head with George Lopez for some particular reason. I don't know why. And then it was found out that like nigga was stealing jokes, never worked in his business again. Like think about that. Think about that. And now a lot of comedians don't want to be confrontational. I'm like, boy, if you don't take off the kid gloves, confrontation like that and do stuff like that. They didn't want, uh, you know. But I had to ask him. I had the opportunity, so I did. Mind you. It, like I said, it's possible that people are going to have the same the similarity in the bits like that. If someone ever comes to me and it has happened, yo, the bits is similar to that. I'm dropping that shit. I got other jokes. I don't want to even sound like someone or remotely. I don't even want to have someone being like close or me making them remind them. I don't want to remind someone else of somebody else. Community. Yeah. I, I, if, I, if it's even close, I'm like, eh. I, I don't Change mind it. sometimes because like I have a whole bit that I wrote about sleep after you like seven years ago. Okay. And then Joy Coy came out with a special recently and it's, there's some similarities. Yeah. That, you know, someone pointed it out to me. And I'm like, 
No, because I want to have videos of me doing it seven years ago, so I'm not getting no. rid of it because I know I did it before him. Mm -hmm. But two, it's like this is personal to my life. It's real. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to let it go. But I understand the sentiment. Yeah. I understand the sentiment. I'm not mad at you for that. Yeah. Everyone got to make their choice. What is clear to me, one, this is stolen. But of course, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, 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 like a, a context. Of course, you know. If I'm yeah, like, but there's nah, one punchline. So there's one yeah. punchline that I'm like, that's crazy. That's so oh good. yeah, yeah, I like that. The rest of it is fine. But there's one that I remember watching his show. I'm like, but you know, I got, I got, I got, I'm, I'm just like, I that's why I don't watch comics. I don't watch comics. I understand. I don't watch anything. But I'm like, you know what? Because I don't even want it to like. Because here's the sometimes you accidentally steal. Yep. You hear it once. Yep. You come in out talking, and then you get this funny idea, not realize you'd already observed it through osmosis. Somebody else, worked, somebody else had it shit ten years ago. Yay! And then you enter and I that. I don't shit. watch yes. it. People are like, yo, you see that? I, I haven't watched this special in like five years. Five years. Other than the communities that I watch locally, I don't watch nothing. Maybe that's not the best way to improve. I don't care. No. For me, this is what's working. But please, you know, moving past that. So they stole it. Okay. I don't want any. They stole it. Some people don't like the idea that people are fighting, arguing about this. Uh, they don't like that cat exposed a lot of these people. People don't like the idea. It brings another problem because people don't like the idea that a black man is exposing another black man. You know? Fuck the idea. Think about it. There's YouTubers that expose other YouTubers in this scene all the time for stealing content, ripping on the same content, doing all that shit the same fucking way. And what happens is that content that you stole from me or anybody like what is it i everybody gets in the beef but when someone calls the beef out there's a whole another problem like oh wow you're calling out beef like, this person had beef with you and then a person comes out with a video like well, i don't got beef with him why he didn't just tell me this in person in private because i think they do that just to get eyes on it right like the whole me too movement it was for people to get eyes on what's happening and honestly, I respect it. Get eyes on what's happening. But then there's a lot of there's a lot of outliers in the back. There's a lot of people that you don't know if it's true or not. Not from the movement in Hollywood, but from in general outside of Hollywood. You don't know who's telling the truth or who's lying. So when it comes to people stealing like video ideas or who's telling the truth, you have to now weigh in what's happening until you find out the truth. And even then you'll never know the truth. Because there's that truth, that truth, and then the actual fucking truth in between. Who's lying? You'll never know. And I get it when it comes to cat and progress and creating jokes. And then you got niggas coming along and stealing your shit and stealing other comedians' shit. And it's like, wow, I really worked on my shit, but y'all just sucking my dick so much. Like, fuck out of here. So well, there's that thing in the community where you can't expose out loud your community because it makes you look bad in front of white people or in front of the large majority of the people in power and stuff like that. True. And automatically, when you do so publicly, you are viewed as bitter, as jealous, as angry. He's hitting it on the head. But people don't ask the questions of what's going on or they don't assess, of, well, maybe, what if there's something there, you know? So there's also that. There's also that, 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 that side of the story where you can't talk about your own in public. There has to be that that sort of a fraternity, brotherhood mm -hmm. that has to be there that you cannot talk bad upon the person. It happened in another video that we covered. You know the guy that was covering restaurants? And Ocho Cinco got mad because... You, you oh, cannot... yeah. Uh, Keith Lee and Ocho Cinco. You can't talk bad about black people. Nigga, I can't talk bad about bad service? Get the fuck out of here. Live a bad review to black people. You can't do that. So there's also that. Someone's stealing jokes in your community. <clears throat> Someone's stealing jokes in your community is doing a disservice to the community. She's not airing that thing out. She's doing a disservice. It's just like the no snitching thing. It's killing everybody out there, but you can't talk because it's going to make us do bag. I understand, but you're not protecting yourself while doing it. You're not. It's, I, I, I get what he's saying with that, especially the no snitching thing. Like, if something like, if I get my car stolen, or someone steal my shit, I'm going straight to the cops. The fuck you mean? If I see something and personally I'm like, eh, it didn't bother me and I don't think what I saw was a major big deal, I'm going to ignore it. But if I see, if I come off my elevator and a nigga shoots, his, shoots some guy in the back of his head and I came out the elevator on my floor, I'm going to lose my motherfucking mind. God forbid the nigga don't shoot me. But then he trying to walk in the elevator and looking at me like I'm just going to not say nothing when there's obviously cameras in my building. 
Like, that don't make sense. Like, no, there's cameras, and this nigga just got shot, and I have to call 911 now because there's blood all over me. Like, I'm not just not going to say something. That's extra because now it's in my face. But if I'm walking down a block and I see two kids jump a kid, I'm probably going to jump in and save that kid from getting his ass beat, even if I know the situation. Like, I don't want to see... They might kill that kid. God forbid they might kill me. But also, I could... I'll be watching, as I'm waiting for the light, a kid's getting jumped... And they stomp him out to death. I just witnessed a fucking murder. Now I definitely got... At that point, shit like... See all of those things that come into contacts? You gotta start telling somebody. Like, I, gotta, I gotta call the cops. They just killed this fucking kid. They just stomped him out. Like, oh, I gotta call the cops. This The, the guy just shot this guy in front of me and walked in the elevator like I wasn't even fucking there. And didn't shoot me. So, because now he thinks, oh, well, you're not gonna tell nobody. I'm like... You just shot someone in front of me and he's dead and there's blood all over me. You think I'm just going to hold my mouth? No, nigga, you stupid. There's different There's different fucking situations and scenarios for holding your tongue in the hood. If someone steals your shit, call the cops. Your car got stolen, call the cops. That's not snitching. That's your property got stolen. Your, your bet, uh, somebody, uh, one of your best friends is cheating on the girlfriend... Do you tell the girlfriend or do you not? That's up to you. Personally, that's up to you. Uh, but there's levels to the whole snitching thing. But let's continue. I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. No, you keep going. Yeah, that's pretty much what I see as well on, on, on that side. It, it, it's kind of that side thing that I see as well that I've seen a lot hmm. online where you cannot question your own. Never. Yeah. Never. And you have to forever shut the fuck up. And then you, you just live all that thing and people he said a beautiful sentence is like winners don't get to let losers tell the story so it, except for in american history where we 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 have losers in the story like you know what i'm saying there's parts of history where there's losers right there in front of us the confederacy were straight up losers but we still talk about them in our history books germany we still talk about how Germany and motherfucking uh, Hitler were the bad guy the entire time. We talk about the loser and how the loser still lost the war and how Hitler killed himself. We still talk about that. We don't just go, well, Hitler came up, he came up through this, and then we came in and, and we beat him and there's no more Hitler. We No, there's history of what the fuck happened. So we, history is, losers are mentioned in history. They just don't end up winning. It, there, there, there's that there's that thing that sometimes your it, it be your own people man your own community lets you like force you to shut up about certain things because it's not gonna look good it, it feels almost like a relic of the past of slavery you know it's not supposed to look bad in front of the masa it's weird there's also that feel weird sentiment that I feel when whenever that happens nah, I can't tell no you fucked up and you're fucking me over mm-hmm you're fucked up. You're making me where you're stealing from us. But I can't tell you that you steal. No, that's you a got a point. Hmm. Anyways. On this whole topic of like, oh, why is he airing them out publicly? Listen, I don't care if Cat Williams is loud about it. I really don't care. Because these people were being loud when they stole from him. They were stealing from him on television. Wasn't that loud? When they were engaging the in theft on national television? That's the loudest you could be. You know, you don't like it, the fact that, oh, there's a little bit of conflict, bruv. This man committed a crime against me on television, and y'all want me to be quiet. I don't care. I don't care if he airs out everybody. I don't care how messy it gets. I don't give a fuck about none of that stuff. Now my business. These people are thieves, and a lot of people are more protect, uh, think it's more important to protect the image of black people rather than rooting out evil people within the community. Yep. Okay? Oh. People who steal Whoa! and pilfer. They want to make sure we look good. Meanwhile, there's dirty shit happening in the back. Yeah. Your clean image doesn't... P. Diddy. Like, Sean Puffy Combs. Right? Like, the Mr. Dancing Man, like, this nigga's did a whole lot of shit, and it's coming out that he's a really fucked up person. It doesn't matter. You're, you know what I mean? Like, it, it feels like the same thing with, like, the... I'm not saying it's the same level of crime with the R. Kelly stuff or whatever, but some people don't want to critique black people so badly that they'll let people do all kinds of nasty shit. And you're not goes, good for the cause it go, either. It goes, it goes for our churches, it goes for our families, it goes for a lot of things. Yes. It looks good. But you don't want to air it out because it, it because you're you're at fear that it's more it won't look good. I don't really care about protecting people who steal from others. I don't care about people who oh. uh, care about protecting. I don't care if you're black, white, Chinese, blue. Don't give a. F
You get the mm -hmm. same treatment from me. If you harm your community, if you harm your people, if you harm people in general, you don't deserve protection from nobody. Even if it's my own family member. I may not attack them publicly. If it's my own family member, though, you're not going to get my protection. Don't care. You want to go around stealing? You need to eat your consequences. Hold your accountability for it. You want to steal from people? You want, don't, don't expect no, me to be people. jumping through hoops. But y'all here want to be more concerned with protecting everybody, even if they don't deserve it. But you're only going to do that because you're not the one personally affected. That's fake to me. All this talk about community, but the truth is, it's because it's not your own pockets. The truth is, it's not your own work that's being stolen. Because if it was you, you would have hoped to God that your community came to your defense to stop the person who's predating on you. But no. He's got a point. He's got a point. When something bad happens, you're going to want the truth to come out. We got to protect our own. Yo, get f***ed with that shit. 100%. What the, what's the point of the community if the moment I get hurt, they telling me to keep quiet, further victimizing myself? You're not going to get none of that support from me. Never. Never. We handle it. We might not handle it publicly, but if you're not able to handle it privately and you still make, then we didn't, we have nothing to talk about. You need to come out publicly and fix what you did publicly. I don't want you to steal my shit publicly and then come to say sorry in private. You better get up there and say it until you do, then we don't have any amends and there is no, no justice, no peace, none of that stuff. That's how I see it. So shout out to Cat. Let him do his thing. Always been one of the greats. Was still one of the greats. And uh, we'll go down as one of the greats. I love his work, so I support everything he yep. said there. As long as it's true, I don't care how it comes out, even if it's a little funky. Also, shout out to Shane and Sharp. He's killing it with the podcast. He's doing good. And I like the way that he just sat back and let... let, let, let. He runs good Talk interviews. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. He runs good interviews. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. But then what? Oh, word. He was he, he was able to pull back whenever like, when was it, it was the right time to pull back and ask the right question. No, no, no. Let, let's, let's circle back on yep. what you said. Yep, 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 yep. Mm. Anyways, ah right, well, the wife should be submissive to uh, her husband. As uh, the husband should be submissive to Hala. Look that up. I don't know what you're talking about. Look that up. Uh, anyways, let's know what you guys think in the comments below. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yo, shout out to Abba and Preach. I know this was a longer video, but I really wanted to talk about this from the Cat Williams point of view and talk about the bullshit that does kind of happen even in a lot of communities, right? Happens in the cosplay community, the anime community. We already saw what happened with the whole Vic Miana shit and how niggas spoke up, but then there was no real proof behind it, which was kind of like, what the fuck is happening here? So there's a lot of people not understanding where these situations and problems are coming from, especially when you, in the black community, there's a lot of, oh, don't speak about it, don't talk about it. I'd be like, nah, fuck that. Like, fuck that. Like, I, I say... We as black people need to fix our own shit. Call people out. Because somebody else on the other side is calling out someone else. So if I have to stay hush-hush about something that I don't feel comfortable with, man, suck my dick. Get the fuck out of here. This is your boy, Fat Man. Let me know what you think of the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, <laughs> hit the bell, comment, go to fire. For me to you, remember to never give up, never surrender, keep on grinding. One of my lights fucking fell, so I gotta put this shit back up. Peace. And I'm out. Yo. Shout out to Cat. Uh... It's the people being exposed. And you know what's crazy? Steve Harvey can't run from any of this shit. Like, he can't run from none of it. <laughs> Neither can Cedric. He gonna be waddling him, like, out the fucking house. <laughs> Yo, peace. Shit. Yeah, been on drum. Yeah, been on drum. You real niggas gonna stop, acting, niggas like gonna stop acting like my shit ain't the grill. Shit ain't the grill. Some of you one. niggas get your front teeth for a grill. <laughs> I ain't talking about the contract. We, 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 we ain't loving these fake hoes. Room smelling like eight switches. Room service like 2K. NBA, I'm ballin', nigga. All them niggas fallin' like all them niggas. Talking shit, I saw them niggas. Now they daughter want a picture. Rough ain't it? Fuck famous. Yeah, niggas too real, got the most haters. Wrote a story, so Stephen Curry. How we feel to be golden?